Minecraft speedrunning. You kind of just do it. But no one really knows anything about it. Well, today, I'm here to collect, present, and analyze all sorts of awesome data with you, dear viewer. Spoiler warning though, I don't actually know the solution to Minecraft speedrunning, but maybe you will after the video. Fortunately, MCSR Ranked has a ton of data to work with, so I'll be using that for the graphs and such that I show. So it's going to be a journey of headaches and cool charts. Let's dive straight in. In my maybe slightly controversial opinion, average completion in Ranked is kind of the perfect statistic to look at if you do want to get an idea of a player's skill. I would even put it above ELO. It can be boosted a small amount by forfeiting when on slow pace, but pretty minimally. I used a query bot created by Desktop Goat to collect every player's ELO, average completion, and forfeit loss. I should probably explain by the way, forfeit loss represents how often you forfeit per loss that you take. It works better than overall forfeit rate since it's isolated from win rate. All right, that's enough yapping. Let's see what the graphs tell us. So, there it is. On the x-axis is the player's elo, and on the y-axis is their average finish. And the color of the dots, they represent the player's forfeit loss. So red would be higher, close to 100%, and blue would be close to 0%. Clearly, we can see that lower elo players forfeit one hell of a lot more. There is a sea of red over on the left side of the graph, and obviously the average times are a lot slower than higher ELO players. Another thing that we were expecting to see was that players with a higher forfeit loss would end up with a lower average completion. And you can kind of see there are lots of red dots along the bottom of the curve, and more blue dots kind of along the top. It's very, very subtle though. Over here, that dot is yours truly. I used to be diamond, but I fell off pretty hard and I haven't quite recovered since. You might have noticed there is a very red dot with 900 ELO and an 830 average. Let me introduce you to Umar. I have no idea which top player it secretly is, but they hold by far the lowest average time ever by simply forfeiting any paces above 9 minutes. I have no idea why this account is a band yet, but it is pretty interesting to see how far they can go with this. Moving on to the higher ELOs, the two players with the lowest averages legitimately are Dugal and Loki. Dugal has been quite dominant in the past few seasons in ELO and being just the fastest player generally. But this begs the question, if Dugal is consistently the fastest player, why hasn't he won any of the playoffs? Ranked speedrunning still has a lot of RNG and lucky decision making involved, even though things are standardized. Yeah, yeah. What the fuck? <laughs> Turning the wrong way in the stronghold can mean an extra minute for your opponent to catch up. Infamously, getting zombie pigs in your bastion can just make you lose like half a minute or even a full minute sometimes on your routing. It's still a random game. And although I believe that Dugal is the best player, that doesn't guarantee him any wins in any match. Especially when it's playoffs. I have no idea. It's so unclear. Monji gets the spike down right. He needs the hunger reset as well. If he hits the zero, I think it's over. It has to be. And did you go All right, next on the agenda is taking a look at the ugly topic of splits. Ugly because of overlapping structures, messing up fortress enters, and players disconnecting when entering the end, and so on. I'm just going to be ignoring these runs. The seven splits I'm using are Overworld, Never, Bastion, Fortress, Blind, Stronghold, and End. This time, I wanted to plot a 3D bar chart for every single rank, and for each rank's average time for that split, since that's really cool and I've never really done that before, so I did. These are the times for call, with Bastions being the slowest as expected at a whopping 6 minute average. Across the board, times are roughly slashed in half from Coal and Iron up to Neverite. But there are some splits which have a much higher rate of improvement than others. 
While the Fortress split only saw a 70% improvement, the Blind split and Stronghold split roughly had a 200% improvement in speed each. That's three times the pace. The Fortress split not seeing much improvement does make sense, because you can only kill Blazers so fast, and it doesn't really take much skill to line out a spawner at lower elos. But it really surprised me to see so much more improvement in the Blind and Stronghold splits. I would have thought that with so many more hours in the game, maybe Bastions would be a lot better. But I mean, the data doesn't lie. If anyone has any reasonable explanations for why this is the case, feel free to put them in the comments. Now, moving on to a more morbid statistic. I really wanted to take a look at the death rates in each split. I did the same 3D bar chart maneuver, but with death rates instead of times. Of course, players die a ton to piglins and bastions, so I'll give you 5 seconds to guess which split is the second deadliest. 4, 3, 2, 1. Okay, here it is. Again, let's just start with coal players. About half of all of their bastion routes result in a death. You guys need to practice those, I think. Expanding the plot, death rates in most splits fall as players get better. But we see that strongholds are actually the second deadliest split. It's mostly due to death resets. In fact, higher elo players death reset far more often, assumably for zero cycling. In a similar vein, the ranks where most players die in the end is Emerald and Diamond since that's kind of the stage that players start going for the more dangerous zero cycle, while not being as prepared to handle it as Neverite players. Interesting stuff. If you're curious about your death rates per split, and how long you spend in each split, I actually made a bot to do exactly that, and showcase how good you are at every single stage of the run. It takes all of your stats by looking at your last 100 games, and compares them to the player base. If you do have any opinions on the bot or feedback on it, do feel free to message me on Discord. And on that note, if you have any constructive criticism or feedback on this video, uh, that would be greatly appreciated as well, since this is literally like the first video that I'm editing. So. That's about it for the general MCSR stuff. Though, I also have some interesting stats specific to ranked that I wanted to showcase. First, I wanted to see how the player base changed from season to season. Which season had the most players, and which season had the greatest inflation of ELO? This is a chart representing the player base from season to season. We can clearly see season 1 is far and away the most popular time to play ranked. It should also be noted that I took this data like halfway through season 5, so there will be more players and it's pretty likely that this season will end up being the second or third most played season. This chart represents the matches per day for each season. Again, we can see season 1 was the most popular season, but ranked isn't going anywhere anytime soon, and it certainly isn't dying. Right, so this thing which I plotted... Oh, I kind of ran out of budget by the way, so I'm freehanding this. Um, it basically plots every single player from every single season. It plots their elo against the percentile of like where they are in the player base, like at the end of that season. So, I mean, we can currently see here that in season five, someone has like 200 elo. I don't know who that is. Uh, maybe I'll find out later, but this kind of, uh, well, a, it shows us the distribution of elo, right? 1,000 is roughly in the middle here, and, you know, it kind of goes really steep up here and then really steep down here. And then secondly, it shows us how ELO inflation does change from season to season, disregarding the player count. So we can see if you want to be in the top 10%, you've got to be roughly 1,350 ELO in every season. And we can also see that season one was actually one of the hardest seasons if you're a mid-elo player. You could be, you know, maybe top 20%, but your elo wouldn't be very high. This kind of shows that elo inflation isn't really a thing. In season three, it was the worst. Uh, you could reach very high elo without really being very high in terms of skill. And 
Right now in season five, we're kind of sitting in the middle in terms of how hard the season is, unless you're a low elo player, in which case the season's going to be harder than usual for you. If you were especially observant, you would notice that in season three, there were the fewest amount of players and elo was highest across the board. And it was the opposite story for season one, which had the most amount of players and elo was lowest across the board. I don't really know why this would be the case, but I'd assume it's to do with new players joining the, the game, losing all of their placement games. And because placement games are worth more, the overall elo in the system goes down. That just about wraps up everything I wanted to show in this video. But if I do think of anything else that I want to, you know, make a cool graph of, I'll be sure to make a part two. Feel free to comment like any other things that you want me to look into. Maybe if it's interesting enough, I might end up doing it. Also, guys, can we hit 1 million likes on this video? If we reach 1 million likes, I will post my OnlyFans already with 3 terabytes of content ready to go. <clears throat> Anyways, uh, thank you guys for watching and hope you have a nice day.